on Wednesdays with vowels and consonants. Questions, please, if any? And if there are none, let me know right away. Yeah, good. Uh, I would like to ask about the, the muscles uh, called uh, stylogloss uh, glasses. Stylo-glosses. Yeah. Uh, Sylvie and I checked the mirror and we didn't see. Yeah, because they're, they're inside. You can't see them that way. But uh, on the pictures, it shows that it's connected like in this way. So it is. Is it possible that we can see? No. It's just a she too. I think I'm not going to test you on these things. First of all, it's quite technical, but it's good that you learn these names and become familiar with these things, even if you don't remember them forever. But it's not really that easy to see exactly what they're like from the drawing. They're not that they're ex they're not external, so you can't really see them. The best thing I can recommend is go to Google's Tushi images and then you'll get different views of them, different pictures and that will make it clearer because this is, this only gives you a, a, a main idea, a very basic idea, but to know how they really look you'll find a lot of really good um, anatomical drawings and photos on the internet since this is not really our Zhongdian, we're just sort of Xie and do the best that you can with the pictures and if you want more details just go to Google Images because you'll see a lot there and we're not going to do what he suggests we're not going to get a sheep's head and boil it <laughs> I've never done that I mentioned it once and my daughter said not in our pots you don't <laughs> because she doesn't eat meat I don't eat meat either so we didn't want any sheep's heads cooking in our pots at home <laughs> So I've never attempted that, but it's an interesting idea. You know, if you're really curious and ambitious, you could see muscle structure that way. But otherwise, I really suggest Google Images. Okay. Anything else? Is that it? Any? Mm-hmm. It says that uh, one meter's most is the shape of the town rather than the particular muscles used. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why isn't um, it uh, helpful if if we know that what muscles we are using when we make a sound. If you are curious, by all means, go study it and learn it. It's not that it's unhelpful, but our purpose here is phonetics and not anatomy. And I have taken a course in physiology. I started a course in anatomy, and I dropped out because it was too many vocabulary words to memorize. And by the way, vocabulary, remember, is uncountable, usually. <laughs> it was just too much. It was a lot of rote learning. I didn't even mind the, dead, the, the cadaver that we looked at. They had him cut open here and his ribs, and they were just flipping it open and flipping it shut and flipping it open and flipping it shut, just like it was a box. So that didn't even bother me. But there are just hundreds and hundreds of words you have to memorize in anatomy. And I found that that didn't appeal to me. I learned it on my own at my own pace. But stuffing it all in at once was not for me. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, by all means, pursue it. And you'll find almost everything you need on the internet if you're really curious. But our purpose here is to learn about the articulations and the sounds. And you could have a piece of plastic in there. It doesn't really matter which muscle it is. It doesn't have to be a muscle at all. It just has to be something in that shape with that right kind of softness or hardness and with the right kind of cavity, kind of cavity above it. And then you will get the right sound. So this stuff is really beyond what we need to do in this class. It's great to know, and if you're curious, please go ahead and do more. Because, as I've mentioned, some of our outstanding former students <clears throat> have ended up in spe speech pathology. And if you go into that, <clears throat> you take a lot of heavy medical school courses, which is great. But we don't really need it for what we're doing here. Uh-huh. OK, anybody else? If that's it. Any other questions? Good. Then let's hand in your work. Assignment for next week is chapter 13, 13 Actions of the Larynx, and it'll be awfully familiar again because we've just finished chapter 6, and that's mostly what chapter 13 is about, the things we have just covered in chapter 6. So it'll be a great review, 
And if there are things that you didn't quite get in chapter six, it may become clearer when you read this chapter. They'll introduce a few new technologies here, like you'll see um, on page 152. So some new technologies you have to think to understand what, this, what these figures and graphs are showing. That will give you, a, I mean, there's definitely new material for you, but the basics are mainly a review. So you've handed in your work. That's V and C. Yes. Next Wednesday, that's right. So you hand them in on the Monday after the coming week. But we're doing one chapter every week, so you still need to do a chapter for next Wednesday, as though we had class. But we'll discuss, um, we'll discuss the class that we missed. We'll discuss that one, 13. We'll discuss that on Monday. And then we'll discuss the next one on Wednesday. So they will still be apart. So it should have been on Wednesday, but no class on Wednesday. We'll discuss it on Monday. Then there's another one due the, the Wednesday right after that Monday, two days later. We'll discuss that on Wednesday. Okay? Thank you for asking. Anything else? Good. We're going to have a dictation, as I promised. Carol, get your paper out. <laughs> I'm sorry? You're shocked? I did announce it. I did announce it and I put it on the syllabus as well. You thought I would skip it or? No, no you just didn't want to think about it. <laughs> well, surprise, it's going to be in English today. English. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> and it's basically one I've given to you before. I've given you many of these items before. The reason I'm doing it now is because in this chapter we're talking about unusual consonants that we didn't cover before because they are not found in English. So why am I giving you a dictation in English? It's because a number of the sounds are nasals. And we're going to be doing unusual nasals. We started last time, remember in Malayalam? We covered six different kinds of nasals that were all phonemic, remember? What were they? Bilabial? Just name all of the possible nasals that you can think of right now. Bilabial, dental, alveolar, palatal, velar. Right, five, was there one more? I don't know, if, I don't think they had uvular. If we can remember five, that's good enough. I just want to make sure that you can hear English nasals. Namely, we have only three kinds in English, which, three? Bilabial, not retroflex, nasals? Ah, uh, that was the other one, thank you. Yeah, I forgot that too, of course, in Indian language. Either Indo-European or Dravidian, you will find retroflexes, thank you. So, na, na, good, now we've got the sixth one. All right, for English, we only have what kinds of nasals? Bilabial, alveolar, velar, that's all we've got. However, allophonically, we just learned that English also may have, we may have dental nasals, that's right, and they, they may co-occur with alveolar, they're allophonic, they're allophones of the alveolar nasal, <laughs> or we may also have another kind of funny nasal that's allophonic. Labiodental, for example, in a word like Emphasis or symphony. So, allophonically, we do have a couple other nasals. And we also have a palatal. For example, minion. Minion, nyin. Minion means a very small thing. Minion, nyin, nyin. That's palatal. So, we do have other nasals that occur allophonically, but I just want to make sure that all of you have no trouble hearing the correct articulation of the three nasal phonemes. Because in Taiwan English, we often have a big problem with lawn, long, right? Lawn, Cao Ping, long, chang. And I had this brought home to me again because I mentioned I just went to Kaohsiung to give a pronunciation, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to give a pronunciation workshop. And I told you the scores of the students, most of whom were teachers, were often in the 60s to 70s. Someone got over 90. One person got over 90, did really well out of 25 items. Most people got 60 to 70 something. <coughs> Excuse me. 
which means, and a lot of the items were about nasals, final nasals especially, un, ung endings. That means they are definitely a big issue in Taiwan English. So we now have a smaller elite group compared to last semester. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we're all very confident of the English nasals. Okay? That's what we're doing. So 10 items. Again, we need spelling and IPA. Okay, listen and watch as well. If you watch, you'll get some cues from my mouse. Number one, tin, tin. Look what kind of competition we've got outside. <laughs> it sounds like a leaf blower or cutting the grass. That often happens during phonetics <laughs> dictations. Over the past 15 or so years, this has happened. Number one again. Ready, everybody? Are we okay? One, tin. Two, tone. Tone. Ready? Remember spelling and IPA both, please. Ready for number three? Tan. Tan. Ready? Number four? Teen. Teen. Number five, ready? Tongue. Tongue. Ready? Number six? Tang. Tang. Ready? Number seven, tong, tong. They're getting closer. <laughs> Ready? Number eight. I guess they're going back right under us. Now they're leaving temporarily. Ready? Number eight. Thank you. Number eight. Tim. Tim. Number nine. Tun. Tun. Ready? Number ten. 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 I'm going to read through all of them. Check your work. Don't leave anything blank. Remember to add velar raising symbols where they are needed. You'll be counted wrong if you're missing a velar raising symbol. Okay? Or if you put it in where it doesn't belong. Here we go. One. Tin. Two. Tone. Three, tan. Four, ting. Five, tongue. Six, tang. Seven, tong. Eight, tim. Nine, ton. Ten, tin. So we've got a bunch of pens up here on the tray. I hope it's enough. So we'll start with Annie. One, Jerome. Two, Bella. Three, four, Vivian. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. There. On the board, please. <clears throat> Let's check our work. Everybody exchange papers. Use a red pen, please. Let's go over it really quickly. Tin. T in is correct. Two, tone. And... Uh, Jerome added the raised H, and if he really wanted to add more detail, we could also add nasalization. <laughs> totally, totally optional. Totally optional. I did not ask for it. The only thing I specifically asked for is 
velar raising, right. And then three, tan is correct. Four, ting, missing. I think we've got red here, so it'll show up better. What's it missing? Velar raising, ting. Remember, what are the three vowels that are raised a bit before ng and also a bit before g? I, e, a, the three front vowels, the three short front vowels. So i, e, a, ting. And then tong. Uh, some of our viewers of the video are going to think, well, this is OK for them because they don't have the aw sound. But I didn't say tong. And actually, I contrast those two words. This happens to be a Chinese word, though. The Tang Dynasty. That's how we say it. The Tang Dynasty. Tang Tao. And this one is Tong. Tong. It's spelled correctly. Ah, uh, five. No, sorry, it's not. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another one. I'm thinking of seven. I just looked at the spelling. No, five should be? OK. So we're missing something at the end. Can make some room this way. Five is what? Shut up. Yeah. Tongue. So spelling is not correct. Now, this is also not correct because it's more in the direction of British English. Tongue. Stick out your tongue. Tongue. But that is also not the vowel. That would be tongue, which is not right for British English either. So this one should be. What does it look like? That's what it sounds like. What does it look like? Bao V, right? Tongue. Well, it doesn't tell me what the symbol is. So, tongue, shu tou, upside down V or wedge. Okay? For five. And six, tang. Tang means a sour taste or tart taste. Just a hen yo, energy, the yi zong gan jue, nahou yu dian suan suan de. That's tang. And it's also the name of a beverage I told you about before. That's correct with velar raising. And seven is the tong. I was misled by this one. It should be here. T O N G tong is qian zi. Those are tongs. But how about the IPA? Spelling is correct. This would be tone. But there's something I've told you that tells you that this is impossible. Before a velar nasal, we never ever have a never have a diphthong. Except for ni sheng zi. Remember I told you to read the page on odd syllable types, remember? So personal names, foreign loans, and onomatopoeia, ni sheng zi. We will find words that break the phonotactic rules in those three places, possibly others. But in the usual vocabulary, you will not find a diphthong before an ng sound. So that's impossible. Tong. That's Taiwan English for tone. Tone. Tong is the name tone in Taiwan English. So this should be. And this one is one you can probably catch by watching my mouth. Watch again. Tong. Even if you don't hear anything. Yeah. Open O, right? Tong. So the raised age is, is optional, but the aw is not optional. So tong, tong, jia zi, lo, jiu zi jia rou, nega jia zi is tongs, or qian zi. And then eight, Tim, very good. Nega ke ti mu lang shi will be pleased. OK, Tim. And then nine, OK, we do have a problem here. And this is exactly why I gave this test today, because I know these are really, really Sticky in Taiwan English. So we're going to need to work on these. Number, ten, number nine is actually what? This is correct, but the spelling is not, which means you think it's shuto and you're saying dun correctly. They're matched to the wrong word. Tan yi dun liang dun, yi gong dun. Tan, tan. Okay? And then the last one, ten. Ten, ten. All right?
Now, did we miss anything? Do we need velar raising here? No, because it's not a front vowel. Okay. I think that looks okay. Any questions? I'm going to repeat all of the items now. Listen carefully. Look at the spelling. Try to imprint it deeply on your, in your mind. Both the pronunciation, the spelling, and also the IPA. Here we go. Tin. Tone. Tan. Ting. Tongue. Tang. Tong. Tim. Ton. Ten. Now, to a native English speaker, they're just kind of ordinary. But as I was reading them, I felt like I was torturing you just now. Because <laughs> I suppose some of them do sound similar, like ton and tongue, right? Or are they okay now? How about if we listen and repeat through all the items? Everybody get ready. One. Tin. 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 Make sure that the tip of your tongue is on your alveolar ridge. Tin. Tin. Good. Tone. Tone. Good. Tone. Tone. Good. Tan. 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 Once more. Tan. Tan. Good. This is a, an automatopoeic word, so uh, it's Ting. 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 Good. Five. Show Tongue. Tongue. And it's not that hard. Tongue. Tongue. The tongue. Open your mouth wider. It's tongue in Chinese, but tongue in English. If your tongue goes lower, your mouth is wider, you should just about get it. Tongue. Tongue. No k at the end. Not here. If there were a voiceless fricative after it, then yes, yeah, like strength and length. Then we have a k. But there's no voiceless fricative after it. So it's not tongue. Right, so no K at the end. Although some people in some dialects will say tongue. In both Britain and the US, like in New York, some people will say tongue. But for standard US English, no. Everyone, tongue. Tongue. Good. Tongue. Tongue. Tun. Tun. Tongue. Good. Tone. Good. All right, on to six. Tang. 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 Probably the majority of Taiwanese will say tan for that word. It will sound the same as this word. The majority of Taiwanese. For them, these two are homophones. But the vowel is wrong because this one is a and this one is a. Tang. Because of velar raising. Uh, so, uh, can I just test you and see how you do on these. Tan and tang. Tan. Tang. You almost have it. It's just about right. Tang. Okay, you're using this vowel, but this vowel changes before ng. It has to be a. 比较偏向 a 的音. Try it again. Tang. Okay, again? Everybody quiet for a minute, please. Okay, make sure you don't put your lips together. It'll turn into an M. Not bad. Most Taiwanese pronounce that tan. And these are bands, right? <clears throat> okay, once more. Tang. Tang. Not te. Te. It's not quite to A, and it's higher than A. It's between A and A. Tang. Tang. Uh -huh. Tong. Tong. Good. Tim. Tim. Uh-huh. Some people have trouble distinguishing Tim and Ting. They call him Ting Casey. Ting. Ting. It's very common among our students in our department. They call him Ting. Have you seen Ting? Yeah. Tim. Tim. You're fine on that. Tun. Tung. Ten. Ten. Tan. Tan. These two might be a problem because of the vowel. Okay? Eight, nine, ten. One more time. Tin. Tin. Tone. Tone. Tan. Tan. Ting. Ting. Tongue. Tongue. Tang. Tang. Tong. Tong. Mm -mm. Some of you have this wrong. I'm going to have to go around the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> Find out who it is. Tong. Ang zang the ang. Tong. Everybody. Tong. 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 Okay, were you on the West Coast? 
Yeah. I thought so. Okay, so you're forgiven. All right. Okay, now it's all right. Tom. Tom, okay. We're okay now. I heard a ton when we were doing it together, but it's okay now. Um, any questions? Okay, we took time on this because I want to make sure these are absolutely clear because in all my years of observing Taiwan English, many Taiwanese will mix these up. The majority, I believe it's the majority. Okay, if that's okay, then please Give yourself a score, a percentage score. Count the number right, multiply by five. Five for spelling, five for IPA. We're on the second to last paragraph, very short paragraph on page 165, and Vivian's going to start. We have the microphone, yes, and the camera's ready. We're all set. Everybody on the right page? Um, elevator stops, nasals, and fricatives. Um, it's not alveolar stops. I think they just mean alveolar. Uh, well, because it's tu di zi, we need to put a little pause there just to show that it's, it's in bold. Okay? Mm, alveolar stops, nasals, and fricatives all occur in English and in many other languages. They need no further comment here. You, they need no further comment here. Yeah. But um, you read beautifully, except you need to link more. It'd be better if you linked. And in many other languages, they need no further, that's not, uh, you don't have to link there, but stops, nasals, and fricatives all occur in English, and, and in many other languages. So there are a lot of words to link there. You need to read ahead, read before you actually read out loud, and mark them to remind yourself if you're not in the habit, okay? Retroflex. No, I want you to reread oh. with the link. <laughs> uh, Alveter stops nasals and fricatives. Nasals all, and nasals and fricatives all. Fri not fricatives. Fricatives. Fricatives all. Fricatives all uh -huh. occurring English and in many other languages. Many. Okay. First of all, not other. Other is. 牛乳,就是那个乳牛的那个牛,那个乳,乳房,那个叫udder,U-D-D-E-R,就是乳牛的那个乳房,叫udder. So that's why it will become distracting. People can usually be understanding, okay, all the other people, all the other people, but if they're going to tease you, they will make some joke about cows and milk or something like that. Udder, U-D-D-E-R, udder. So please avoid the for the because you can all pronounce the the just fine. So you just have to change the habit. It's not that you can't do it. And be aware of that joke, all right? Because it gets really tiring, stuff like that. Just like in Chinese, zi tzu. People always say, oh, what's in Like you're, you're having, for example, xian dou jiang. Oh, wo yao jia tzu, wo hen xi wan zi tzu. Ha ha ha, zi tzu, oh, ni zi tzu. It's such an old joke. We make it so often. Yin wei yi tian dao wan yao jia tzu. So this is another one. Other is such a common word. And we, we don't need to go through that same routine all the time. OK, once again, and in. And in many other mm -hmm. languages. There you go. They need no further comment here. Mm -hmm. Retro five. Five? five? Mm -hmm. Retro five. 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 Everyone, five. Five. Not five. 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 Different words, OK? Five, retroflex, stops, nasals, and fricatives do not occur in the occurring most forms of English. The outstanding exception is exception? the exception okay. is the English spoken in India. Okay. Mm, retroflex sounds are made by curling the tip of the tongue up and back mm -hmm. so that the underside touches or approaches the a back probe. approaches mm -hmm. the back part of the alveolar ridge alveolar alveolar ridge a ridge because it's not a no it's not a compound noun right. it is a noun but it's not a compound noun okay the sis, uh, the symbols used by IPA for retroflex sounds include Ka, da, na. 
All right, we're officially learning them. We already learned them last semester, remember, for two reasons. Because number one, they were in the tutorial, number one. We learned about retroflexes in the tutorial. And number two, we used one of those in, in Mandarin, in transcribing Mandarin. And I read the student feedback and they said, that was too fast. I wasn't able to learn it very well. So we'll probably try to find time to do more practice with transcribing Mandarin. And if we have time, we'll try to transcribe Minayu as well, which is really exciting. And then some of you say, but I don't know Minayu. That's OK. You know enough to do the assignment. And you will learn enough to do the assignment if you don't know it. Um, so we already learned them. We didn't use them so much with these symbols. We used them with what symbol in Mandarin? With what symbols? We added that little hook onto onto what letter? S, S right? Yes. We added a little hook onto S for shu bu shu de shu, and also we added a little hook onto another letter, Z, Z to make ri zi de ri, right? So shu ri and tu. We've already had those for Mandarin. Okay, and continue. Remember that just as dental is a gesture that can be defined as an articulator. 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 The tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And a tar target, the upper teeth. The upper teeth. The upper teeth. Okay. So also retroflex. So also, pause. When you see something in 斜体字, it needs to be emphasized, so we're probably going to pause a little bit to make it more prominent. So also, retroflex Good. describes the gesture involving the underside of the tip of the tongue and the target. And a target. And a target. Right. The back of the alveolar ridge. The alveolar ridge, right. So we're now reviewing something. They're not totally new. They're sort of new, but we've actually looked at them before. I just didn't use them a lot before. So when we say dental, we've got two parts to keep in mind. One is the active articulator, which he calls just articulator here, which is the tip of the tongue, and the target, which we learned as passive articulator. Remember, active and passive articulator? That's what they call them in the tutorials. Um, that's the upper teeth. And that's reflected in the terms that we use in English as opposed to Chinese because a dental sound in English, we often just call in in Chinese. You can call in. So alveolar, for example, we call in, but alveolar ridge is the passive articulator in English. It's the active articulator in Chinese. So keep in mind that we often get the two sides if we take both languages together. But dental in Chinese, you can call in. In English, it can also be called apical. Apical. A, it's the adjective for apex. A P E X. Apex is the dian feng of something. Ding duan. And the adjective form is apical. And that's usually what we call zi, si, si in Chinese because you're using the very tip of your tongue to produce them. But what is that very tip of your tongue touching? the back of your upper teeth. So you call it in in Chinese more often. We call it apical in English more often. You can also call it dental, but shang, at least in the Chinese linguistics class I, classes I had, they usually called it apical if we were talking English. OK, so dental has two parts. It has an active and a passive articulator. In the same way, retroflex, go ahead. A retroflex sound, what? The active articulator is not just the tongue. We have to be really specific here. And not just the tip of the tongue, either. The underside of the tip of the tongue. And that's the really core part of what, is, what it is to be retroflex. The underside of the tip of the tongue. If it's just the tip of the tongue, it can be apical or dental. But it's the underside. You have to curl it back. So the underside comes up and touches or gets close to either the alveolar ridge or the post-alveolar area or the palatal area is possible if it's very retroflex. Okay? So 
Although retroflex describes a manner of articulation, remember that it is also a place of articulation, like dental and alveolar, underside of the tip of the tongue plus post-alveolar region usually. Okay? Uh, students sometimes imagine that the term retroflex describes a manner of articulation, but in fact it is a place of articulation, like dental. It is a place of articulation. It is a place of articulation, like dental and alveolar. Uh, at each of these places of articulation, it is possible to produce stops, nasals, fricatives, and sounds made with other manners of articulation. Uh, as we saw in tables 6.2 and 6.7, the languages Sindhi and Hindi contrast several types of retroflex stops. Retroflex stops. Retroflex stops. You're reading beautifully. Sindhi. Sindhi. Yeah, not C, it's in a, at least in English we'll say sin and it's alveolar. Sindhi. Malayalam table 7.2. Leave a little more of a pause there. Malayalam table 7.2. Malayalam table 7.2 mm -hmm. uh, contrasts three coronal gestures. 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 Good. Dental, alveolar, and retroflex. Good. In addition, Malayalam has bilabial, palatal, and veter sounds. Uh, Veter sounds. No, you did it right. The first time was good. Veter <laughs> sounds. Veter mm -hmm. sounds. Veter sounds. Veter sounds. Mm -hmm. So that it so that it contrasts nasals with six basic types of gesture, six places of articulation, all of which are uh, exemplified in Table Seven Point Two. Beautiful reading. That was really nice. Let's just go over those six. Places of articulation for nasals, and I'll just we'll just use ah for practice. We did the sound files last time. So bilabial, ma. ma. Uh -huh. Dental, na. na. Alveolar, na. na. Retro, retroflex, na. 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 Palatal, nya. 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 Sounds like a child taunting somebody. Nya, 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 nya. That's an that's a palatal, okay? And velar, nga. 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 Okay, we haven't done uvular yet. So, so far so good. And then the other um, sounds here with, uh, let's see, voiceless, alveolar stop, everybody. Ka. 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 Not ka. Ta, 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 ta. Roll up your tongue. Ka. 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 Da. 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 Na. 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 Okay, let's go on. Because a retroflex gesture. Watch that su, it's because. Because, mm -hmm. because a retroflex gesture is made with the undersurface of the tip of the tongue touching or near the back of the, of the alveolar ridge. The blade, the upper surface of the tip, of the tongue is usually a considerable distance from the roof of the mouth. As a result, the result? tongue. Result? As a result, uh -huh. result. Everyone, result. Result. That's a Z sound. Okay. As a result, the tongue is somewhat hollowed, as shown in a diagram of a retroflex fricative sh mm -hmm. in figure 7.2. Try making this sound yourself. Try making. Try making this sound yourself. Mm -hmm. Start, start, start with s, in which the tip of the tongue is raised toward the front part of the alveolar ridge. The, the alveolar ridge. Mm -hmm. Now, while maintaining the fricative noise, slowly slide the tip of the tongue back, curling it up as you move it backward. You will be producing a consonant. Consonant. Sh okay, make it Beijing. Sh, yeah, which sounds something like sh, although, although the articulatory, although, all, all, uh -huh. although, the articulatory position is different. Mm -hmm. Articulatory. Articulatory. Mm -mm. Articulatory. Articulatory. Good position. Right. 
and then C6 below for discussion of the articulatory position of shh, we already know that actually. So isn't it nice to have something that you already know? The only thing you have to do is make it Beijing to make it more actual retroflex, because in Taiwan it's pretty much not retroflex. So sure, sure, there you go. Let's go on. When you, when you have learned to say, say sure, try adding voice so that you produce sure. When you have, lear have learned to say sure, try adding voice so voice. voice. Everyone? Voice. Voice. Not voice. 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 Mm -hmm. Try adding voice so that you produce zhi. Right. Zhi. Mm -hmm. Or alternate the voiced and voiceless sounds. Everybody? <laughs> Another one you know. Wow. Next. Still with the tip of tip of the tongue curled curled up and back in this position. 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 Good. Make the stops. Pa, pa, da. All right. He's trying to lead you into pa da by having you make the retroflex sure and zhi first. So shi zhi pa. It's a little easier to roll it up more for the stops, I think, because shir, shir, tongue is a bit flatter for me anyway. So make your tongue all rolled up and ka, 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 da, 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 ka, Okay? Let's retroflex T and D. Not, so, okay. Notice how the stops affect the. How the the how the mm -hmm. stops affect the quality the of quality here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the quality of the follow, the, the quality mm -hmm. of the following vowels the, the following vowel mm -hmm. giving it a sort a sort of our coloring our coloring our coloring at the beginning. Okay. Ka ka you mo just a little hard for Americans, when we're just learning Mandarin and we usually learn a Beijing accent, or we try to, it sounds like an R to us. But some of my classmates would say, sure, bu sure. Doesn't sound right, does it? I had to listen to that for a few years from some of my classmates. Sure, bu sure. And the funny thing, okay, this is a bit off color, but when they said not, bu sure, it sounded like a bad word in English. Bu sure. You, you, you figure it out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, but in any case, it does have a bit of an R sound, but don't overdo it because then it won't be right either. So, sure, sure. Because they're all retroflex, uh, it will sound a bit, a bit R colored, okay? Now produce the corresponding nasal growth. Let's put an I after it. Na. Na. Roll up your tongue, so like ka, da. Na, na, so they are Na, okay. Learn to learn to say learn to say all these sounds before and after different vowels. All right, ah is really easier. The back vowels are easier. Let's try o. Say so try o, not really a, a diphthong, just o. No, no. How about u? No, no. Now let's try e. Knee. Knee. That's tough. You have to unroll to make the E. Knee. Knee. Let's try A. Nee. That's not so bad. Nee. And how about A? Nah. Nah. Okay. Good enough? Finally, try to say the Malayama Yalam words in Table 7.2. You may notice as you imitate these sounds that your tongue tip moves to tongue, tongue tip. Tongue tip. Tongue tip. Tongue tip. Make it really clear, the ung part. Tongue tip. Tongue tip. Okay. Watch that one because sometimes you go to tongue. Tongue. Tongue tip. That your tongue tip moves during the ret retroflex stops. Slight stops. Stops. 
sliding forward for post from, from. from post alveolar toward a more alveolar place of articulation during the retroflex stops stop so that the preceding the preceding vowel Pre preceding 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 pre preceding right. vowel has more R coloring than the following vowel. Why don't we stop there and take a break? We'll go over it after break. Just estimating about how long this is going to take us to finish. Okay, because eight is the really, it's the really, really crazy chapter where everything, the really interesting stuff happens in chapter eight. Although you've already had an introduction to a lot of it. Okay, uh, let's continue with this paragraph. Why don't we go on to another reader? That's a really long paragraph. So here, we said, you may notice as you imitate these sounds that your tongue tip moves <clears throat> during the retroflex stops, sliding from post-alveolar toward a more alveolar place of articulation during the retroflex stop, so that the preceding vowel has more R coloring than the following vowel. So if you say ada, but make it retroflex, arda, ar, imofashia, you wouldn't arda way da, because you're getting your tongue ready for the da. You made an R away bell. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Okay. Next. Figures six point three and seven. Figure. 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 Right. And what number? Seven point mm -hmm. three. Good. Shows a spectrogram of the Malayalam word. Kat. In which we have traced with the again traced traced good with the white white line the third vowel formant the third highest acoustic resonance acoustic uh, acoustic resonance of the vocal tract. Very good. Remember formants from last semester? Like I said in the past, we didn't learn about formants at all first semester, but you already learned a bunch of things about formants already. And <clears throat> remember that F1 is which formant? The, the creaky formant? Remember creaky voice formant? Going ah, ah. That's how you can hear the first formant. Formant two is it's the whisper, right? The whisper formant or the whistling formant. And formant three usually has to do with lip rounding and R coloring. And R's in English involve lip rounding, so they're related. So lip rounding and R coloring go with formant three. And that's why we're talking about the third formant now when we're talking about retroflexes. We're, we're getting that R coloring, a bit of it anyway. So that's going to affect the third formant. And it tells you to look at figure 7.3. And <clears throat> look in your own books, but I'll just show you the general area where you should be looking. You can see this white line that they drew. This is F1 down here. This really thick black bar down here is F1. The next thick black bar is F2. And this thick black bar is F3. And that's where they've drawn a white line right in the middle of it. So you can see, look at it going down. Right, you can see that's movement in the third format, and that's associated with lip rounding and R coloring. Okay. The third format is known to go down to in frequency for a retroflex sound. Isn't that what we just said? And that will help us when we are reading spectrograms. We're just going to take a spectrogram and read it. We started reading waveforms a bit last semester, remember? But we were mostly just segmenting. We wouldn't read them outright. But we're going to have an exercise in Chapter 8, a couple exercises, when we look at it at a, at a spectrogram and then we try to guess what sounds were made, what words were made. But that's one thing that you can remember starting now that will help you. If you see a fall, a quick, uh, a, a, a steep fall in, in uh, F3, that probably signals lip rounding or a retroflex, right? Good. 
Notice in figure. Notice. Notice. Notice mm -hmm. in figure seven point three okay. that the third formant drops to a low value at the at the offset. 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 Right. Of the vowel a. Uh. A. Uh. Right. Pre preceding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then at the end of mm, picks up at the somewhat higher value at a, not at the at a at the uh -huh. somewhat higher value at the start of the following vowel e. All right. So the word is gunni, gunni, and it goes down towards the end of the go go because we're getting ready to make the mm -hmm. retroflex. And then it goes back up again for the ikonni. It goes back up. And um, watch the terms onset and offset. Onset means beginning. Offset means the end. Remember on glide and off glide? So onset is the beginning and offset is the end of a certain sound. OK? This acoustic dynamic is a retro Reflection. Hmm? You've Re got retroflection uh, on the uh, brain. We all do right reflection now. Reflection right. of the articulatory dynamics of the tongue tip. Tongue tip. Tongue, tongue tip sliding forward along the roof of the mouth during. Mm, no, no. No. Good. Reading is very, very nice. One thing you need to watch out for is e and i. A lot of your is start going to e. So, for example, this instead of this. So, you can put that in your notes. Your reading was really very nice, but watch out for i. Don't read it as e. Good. So we're okay. We're, we now know something about what retroflexes look on a spectrogram, and that's pretty advanced stuff. Let's go on to the next paragraph. Retroflex stops and nasals occur in many of the major languages in India, and retroflex fricatives and, and, and uh -huh. retroflex fricatives are not at all uncommon. Good. Um, one sound sounded a little odd. Major. 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 Right. It sounded major. like major. It should be major. Major. Yeah. Okay. Major. They vary somewhat in the very somewhat. They vary somewhat. Yeah. They vary somewhat in the degree to which the tip of the tongue is curled backward. Tongue. Tongue. Okay. In Hindi and other languages of northern India. Okay. In Hindi. In Hindi, then, now it's good. Yep. In Hindi and other languages of northern India, retroflex sounds often have often? the often have the tip of the tongue only slightly tongue 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 there tongue only slightly behind the most prominent part of the alveolar ridge. Alveolar. Alveolar ridge. Yes. <laughs> Much but not ridge. Ridge. Ridge, 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 okay. much as indicated in Figure Seven Point Two, mm -hmm. in Malayalam, the other languages, mm -hmm. and uh, and other languages spoken in the southern India, in the southern India, mm -hmm. take out the the, that's wrong, in southern India, Mayo in in the southern part of India or in southern India, they probably corrected only half of it. Okay. In southern India, the tip is curled farther, farther back, mm -hmm. so farther that back. farther back, mm -hmm. so that the underside again, so that the so that the okay. underside of the tip of the tongue touch not tongue tongue touch of tip of the tongue 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 there tongue uh -huh. touches the roof of the mouth. Good roof roof. Look at my mouth. Roof. Okay, not. You're making it sort of a Chinese R, and it's not r, it's r, roof. Roof. There we go. That's nice. Roof. Good. Okay. So I think you should put in your notes initial R, but more importantly, tongue, final NG, final velar nasal, tongue. You get it when I correct you and you imitate it fine, but when you're just reading without giving it special attention, it will come out as ton very often. So work on un and ung, and go to the last 
Shuddha article online. There's a bunch of examples to practice on. Okay? There's a couple tables with examples. Very good. Nice reading. Next. Six. The palato of velar gestures for sh j differ from retroflex gestures in the part of the tongue involved. A palato alveolar gesture is alveolar. Alveolar okay. gesture is one in which the target on the upper surface of the mouth, the upper, the upper surface of the mouth, uh -huh. is about the same as for a retroflex sound. Retroflex. Retroflex okay. sound. At the margin between the the alveolar ridge and the alveolar ridge. Alveolar uh -uh, ridge. Not villa. Alve. LV Le Ridge, Le Ridge uh -huh. and the front of the palate. But unlike retroflexes, in this gesture, the front of the tongue is slightly domed as opposed to being hollowed. Compare figure 1.10, which, show, which shows the position of the vocal organs in the palatal alveolar fricative sh, as in shy with a retroflex fricative in figure 7.2. Let's do that. Figure 1.10 is in chapter 1 on page. You can help us the fastest. Very good. Wow. Okay. And there's 1.10. And that's how the mid-sagittal view of the head looks to when we produce sh or zh, sh or zh. And then compare that to compare that to figure 7.2. That's on the preceding page. This is what we're doing when we're making a sh 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 sh. So page 167 and page 17. You can compare those two tongue shapes. Okay. Go on. Note that in both sh and sh, the maximum constriction of the vocal tract occurs near the back of the alveolar ridge. Have the... The alveolar ridge. Uh-uh. The alveolar ridge. All right, first of all, two things to watch out for. It's LV, it's not LV. Everyone, alveolar. 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 Now, technically, some people will say alveolar, but I've never said it that way. It's not the way I heard it in the 70s, so I've never said it that way. And ridge is not e, it's i. So alveolar is e, ridge is i. The second point is it's not a compound noun. So we need to stress ridge, even though we repeat it over and over and over again. You'd think that we'd make it into a compound just because we use it so much, but we don't. So alveolar ridge. Everyone? Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Not villar. V. Yeah. Alveolar ridge. That was perfect. Let's say it five times. Go. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. Nice. Good. Okay. But these two sounds are said to have different places of articulation because the terms specify different gestures. The place of articulation designate nates both the target on the roof of the mouth and the part of the tongue moving toward that target. Moving toward that target. Moving toward that target. Good. In retroflex sounds, it is the movement of the, the upper underside of the tip of the tongue that forms the gesture. But in palatal alveolar sounds, the active articulation later is the tongue blade. All right, the tongue blade. We talk about that every once in a while, not that often. But now we're going to be talking about the tongue blade, and then we're contrasting it here with the underside of the tongue tip when we're comparing, uh, when we're comparing a sound like sh to a retroflex sound like sh. And there's some more information in the next paragraph. Let's go. Another way of distinguishing. Another way. Another way of mm -hmm. distinguishing between retroflex and palatal alveolar sounds is to, call, is to call them all post alveolar and, in addition, name the parts of the tongue involved. Okay, the re your reading today was much better, but you still are tending to go down. So whenever you come to the end of a tiny little utterance,
try to use a continuation rise. So listen. Another way, doijinyola. Another way of distinguishing, yeyo, between between. This is just a very unstressed mid-tone flat word. Retroflex continuation rise and palato alveolar sounds. Another continuation rise is to call them all continuation rise post alveolar. And in addition, name the part of the tongue involved. So there are a lot, a lot of continuation rise, and it was already better this time than last time. But you're still tending to fall at all of those pauses. But try to make it into continuation rises. Why don't you try it again? Another way, another way of distinguishing between retroflex, distinguishing, distinguishing between retroflex, retroflex, retroflex and palato alveolar sounds. Palato alveolar sounds. Palato alveolar sounds. Just do that line again. Palato alveolar. The whole line. <laughs> Sorry. Another way of distinguishing between ret retroflex. When you go up too high, that's going to push you down. Distinguishing, you're going too high. You're going up to the tonic level, but we're not at the tonic yet. So listen very carefully. You can make some pencil marks or something, but listen carefully. Another way of distinguishing between retroflex and palato alveolar sounds is to call them all post alveolar. This one we can go down because it's like the end of a statement. And in addition, name the part of the tongue involved. So don't go up too high because if you're up too high, you have no room for a tonic. And when you're up high, you tend to go down, which we don't want to do. So try to keep it a little lower than too high. Once more. Another another way. Another way. Another way of distinguishing between retroflex and palato alveolar sounds. Sound. Sounds, that was that was okay. Sounds, palato alveolar sounds. Palato alveolar sounds is to call them. Is to call them all. Is to call them all. Is to call them all post alveolar, and in addition, name the part of the tongue involved. Name the part of the tongue. Name the part of the tongue involved. Name the part of the tongue involved. Okay, part doesn't need to be that much longer. So name the part of the tongue involved. Name the part of the tongue involved. Good. Yeah. Sounds sounds made with the tip. Sounds which are some really we need to pause. So, sounds made with the tip of the tongue may be called apical. That was really good. I'm getting really picky now. Um, made, we're going to stop there too. It's a single syllable with stress. So listen, sounds made with the tip of the tongue. Look at what I'm doing with my hand here. Sounds made with the tip of the tongue. Everybody try it. Sounds made with the tip of the tongue. Dun dun da da dun da da dun 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 da da dun da da dun. Sounds made with the tip of the tongue. And don't go. Sounds made with the. 那就节奏就有点乱掉 Sounds made with the tip of the tongue. Sounds made with the tip of the tongue of the tongue、mm -hmm. may be called apical. Good. And those made with the blade. And those made with the blade. And those made, <coughs> and those made with the blade may be called laminal. Right. Why do we not have a lot of rises there for the for the content words? Because we have contrast blade and tip. So we want to we want to stress blade. That means we're going to suppress the stresses before it, and those made with the、uh, and those made with the、uh, we're going to sound like a robot or like a monk chanting, right? 和尚念经，机器人讲话 We do that when we're getting ready to contrast an item. So remember, 和尚念经，机器人讲话 before a contrast. So and those made with a blade and those made with a blade. May be called laminal. This.、Mm, can you try that? And those.、Uh, and those made with a blade may be called laminal.、Mm -hmm. Thus, the term retroflex is exactly equivalent to apical post alveolar. Stop, because this is very heavy now, very dense. Apical. That's the very tip of the tongue. Post alveolar behind the alveolar ridge, and. And. 
and palatal alveolar is equivalent to laminal post alveolar. All right, so we've got two post alveolars here, right? But it's the active articulator that's different. We have to pay attention to that. So retroflex goes with apical post alveolar, palato alveolar goes with laminal post alveolar. Now, can you imagine somebody walking in on class just saying that sentence and they go, what a bunch of nonsense? All of those technical words, but it makes sense to all of you now. So it shouldn't sound like that to you. So retroflex, apical, apical is the active articulator, post alveolar is the passive. Palato alveolar, laminal, the laminal, the blade of the tongue, the laminal part of the tongue is the active articulator, post alveolar is the passive. This is all okay? So they have similarities, but the main difference is in the passive or the active articulator. The active articulator is different, right. We're using the underside of the tip of the tongue, okay? There are advantages in introducing the terms apical and apical, apical and laminal in that they, they may also apply to other gestures. Dental sounds may be made with the tip of the tongue or, or, or with, with the blade of the tongue, and so may alveolar sounds. All right, let's try to say ta, ta. Let's make it dental with the tip of the tongue. Ta, ta, ta. 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 Okay, we don't need nasalizing. Uh, ta, ta. Yeah, not chi ta, ta. Okay, ta, ta. All right, now let's try to make the same ta sound. And keep it dental, but we're going to use the blade of the tongue. That means your tongue's going to be pushed forward a bit. So, ta, ta, ta. Your tongue is almost going to be sticking out here, the tongue tip, because you're using a further back part of your tongue. All right, now let's make alveolar sounds with the tip of, this, of the tongue. Not dental now. Ta, ta, ta. That's my normal way of saying it. Try to use the blade now and don't touch your teeth. Ta, ta, ta. All right, you just push your tongue further forward. So we can use both the tip, either the tip or the blade, for dental sounds and also for alveolar sounds. Okay? With the use of these extra terms, we can distinguish between the apical, 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 mm -hmm. a, a, apical, ap, apical dental stops that occur in Hindi, table 6.7, and the laminal dental stops that occur in French. All right, so they're talking about ta, ta, ta in Hindi, but the, the, the in French. The tongue is going further forward. Yeah. In Australian ab, ab original Aboriginal? Aboriginal languages, the difference between ap, apical and laminal sounds is often very important. If you want to pursue this fur further, go to the map, in map index on the CD Good. and check out the, abori the, the. the aboriginal languages spoken in Australia. Right. Australia. No aspiration, everyone? Australia. Australia. And it's called Down Under. They call it Down Under and someone from Australia is called an Aussie. And I always said Aussie, and I hear both. This morning on the BBC I heard Aussie. I think it should be Aussie, but they said Aussie. He was British though, I think. Maybe, maybe Australia. Um, so just be aware of that. If you hear, if you hear Aussie, it's some, something from Australia or a person from Australia. And this is interesting because the tongue tip and the tongue blade are so close to each other, but in many Aboriginal languages of Australia, they're totally different phonemes. That's kind of interesting. Okay. In English, the only palatal alveolar the, the the only palatal alveolar sounds are the fricatives and affricates. Sh j z mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In other in other languages such as French and Italian, there are nasals made concerted to be palatal sounds. No language that we know there of are nasals made what? There are nasals made. Eh, oh, oh. There are na nasals made in either the same or a very similar position. These nasals are often arbitrary, arbitrarily, arbitrarily considered to be palatal sounds. Palatal sounds. Palatal sounds. Mm -hmm. No language that we know or makes 
No language that we know of makes a distinction between a palatal alveolar nasal and a palatal nasal. Some of, some of the palatal sounds in Italian will be discussed later in this chapter. So they're talking about distinctions in various languages. Like in English, we will not distinguish between the tongue tip and the tongue blade for things like alveolar stops or nasals. But in Australia, there are Aboriginal languages in which there are different phonemes. And here, they're talking about small differences like palatal sounds and alve uh, palatal alveolar sounds. And he's saying he knows of no language in which those are separate phonemes. So they're very close. Probably no language distinguishes them phonemically. Go on. Um, the IPA chart puts palatal alveolars into the post-alveolar column. A section labeled other symbols also mentions alve alveolar palatals and provides the symbols These symbols are used for voices C and Z C Remember GTC the C? C and Z is just the voice version of C, Z, C, Z Just like Sh, Sh, Z, C, Z or Z these symbols are used for voiceless and voiced fricatives in Polish and Pol Chinese. Uh, Polish, Polish. Polish. And, Polish mm -hmm. and Chinese. If it's not capitalized, it's probably Polish. Polish. Um, Polish and Chinese. And there are a number of Poles in Taipei. I've run into a number of Poles. I have one Facebook, Facebook friend who's Polish. So if you need a native speaker, um, he's, on, he's on our uh, NTU phonetics, so you can ask. Mm. Though similar to sh, zh, they have considerable raising of the front of the tongue. They are also, they are also made in the post-alveolar region. All right, since xi is in your native language, compare xi to shi and try to feel what the differences are. Xi, xi, it says considerable raising of the front of the tongue. The front of the tongue. Compare to see your tongue has to go up there, you're smiling, and your tongue goes way up there. See, see, gets really close to the palate. Can you all feel it? It's your native language, so compare English with see, see, see. Your tongue is really. Okay, so. There's considerable raising of the front of the tongue, and they are made in the post-alveolar region. Okay. Tables illustrating contrasting fricatives in contrasting again contrasting uh, fricatives in Polish and Chinese are on the CD. Both these languages are interesting. Uh, interesting. Are, mm -hmm. are interesting mm -hmm. because they have dental or alveolar uh, dental or alveolar, post-alveolar, retroflex, and alveolar palatal fricatives. There we go. Both of the languages have these, which makes them quite interesting. So please spend some time on the CD. I don't want to do it now. I want to get through more of the chapter. But you've all got the CD, or you can get it online. Please put that in your notes. Please listen to this. Mark this paragraph. Mark it in your notes. Listen to them yourself. And since it's your native language, I think it will be especially interesting for you to compare them to Polish, to compare these sounds that also exist in Polish. Okay. A note: There are some uh, disagreements, disagreements among authorities, disagreements yeah. among authorities as to the best descriptions of these sounds. Of these sounds. Of these sounds. Of these banamaga. Of these sounds. You're still making it higher. Of mm, of these sounds. Yeah, that's right. That's how you do it. You put of the stress these on sounds. sounds. That's where the tonic is. So he's giving you his interpretation. His description. It doesn't mean everybody agrees. And you will find this, I think I warned you about it last semester, especially when we were doing a transcription of Mandarin. I said these are my personal choices. It's a very personal transcription. I taught graduate students at, at Zhengda for a while. And they said, hey, Ms. Cho, we learned it this way in this other class. Is this all wrong? And they were panicking which teacher was wrong. They had to throw away one of their teachers, and they didn't know which one to throw away. And I said, there are different interpretations of the data. There are different descriptions. That happened to be about phonology in that case. In phonology, anything is possible because it's very abstract. 
But in phonetics, you'd think we'd agree more, but there still are disagreements about how to describe them, the best way to describe them. And 不要小那个那个那个小金大怪. Okay, so it's 没有大金小怪. <laughs> okay, 不要大金小怪. Um, um, there will be differences. Not everybody's going to agree. In phonetics, though, we agree a lot more than people agree in almost any area of linguistics. There's more agreement here than there is in almost any area. Like grammar, syntax, you know, people are just 死对头,变敌人了, uh, because they have different ways of analyzing the data and presenting the data. And in morphology, it's not highly developed, actually, but people have very different points of view. But in phonetics, actually, a lot of us are led by Peter Latifoged. That doesn't mean we believe every single thing that he says, and that's the only thing we believe. There are a lot of other great phoneticians. I happen to like him a lot. But there are a lot of other really great phoneticians in the world. And a lot of them have their own contributions, and they don't always agree. So just don't be too surprised if you run into that. OK? Next. 7. Palato sounds can be defined as being made with the front of the tongue, uh, with the front of the tongue approaching or touching the hot palate, and for many speakers, with the tip of the tongue down behind the lower front teeth. There is no clear-cut distinction between these sounds and palato alveolar sounds. The only, uh, the only true palato in English is i, which is usually an approximate but may be allophonically a voiceless fricative in words such as you. Okay, we talked about that last semester, but let's review. For example, you, yours, yarn, yeast, that's all y. This is the only true palatal, according to Latifoga, in English. And it is usually voiced, but if the sound before it is voiceless, it also may become voiceless. For example, hue. Hue has different meanings. It means diao. It also means hanjiao, the hue and cry. Is a hanjiao the And because he is voiceless, ye is also voiceless. So you try it. You can feel the ye being voiceless. And remember with approximants, what happens when approximants are voiceless? We hear friction. That's right. With um, um, yeah, with, with, with approximants, when they are voiced, we don't hear the friction. It's kind of being blocked out by the voicing. Y, y. But when they're voiceless, we will hear, we will hear friction. So hue, pure, cute, etc. We'll have the same. We'll have the same thing. Okay. The symbol for a voiceless palatal fricative is cisadil. <laughs> cisadilla. Cisadilla. Mm -hmm. um, so this word may be transcribed phon phonemically as hue. Phonemically. 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 Ni and then, 后面的部分现在好了. Phonemically. You're saying phonem phonemically. Phonemically. Phonemically mm -hmm. as hue and phonetically as hue. Good. Phonetically. Phonetically. Not phone. 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 All right. Bella was talking to me during break. She said that when she believed she was saying the name Ellen, that her her teacher was that right? Um, no. Or a friend? Language exchange. A language exchange partner kept hearing Alan. And then she repeated for me a few times, repeated it for me a few times, and said, Ms. Chung, what does it sound like to you? I'm making, I'm already putting my hand up, I'm keeping my jaw up. Why does it sound like Alan? The reason is because in Taiwan, most people have an A sound for this sound, for this S sound. Most people have an A sound. To change it, you have to make a lot of effort. And if you just go down a tiny bit, we will hear it as this sound. 你只要是偏离这个一点点, so you have to be really strict with yourself in holding your jaw up. So let's practice then. This one's easy. Alan. Alan. You can see how wide I open my mouth? Alan. 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 All right, now I have to be very self-disciplined. Ellen. Alan. You sound good. All of you sound good now. So. You have to be really self-disciplined. If your jaw goes down just a little bit, I'll say it right and then I'll pin the Isha. Ellen, Alan, Alan, Ting And so it was driving Bella nuts, right? You're saying, I'm already saying Ellen, why do you keep saying it's Alan? 
只要偏离一点点，有一点 add 的色彩，就听成 L 了。So you really, really have to discipline yourself with that S sound. Ellen. Ellen. Alan. Alan. Ellen. Ellen. Good. That's great. When you are learning these things, can you like put notes into your into your class notes? Write it down in your class notes, because often when you learn something, at the time you have an insight and you figure out a way to to pull, and then you learn it right. But then you forget how you did it. You just say it right. 你是怎么学的会忘记，你只是现在会讲对，你就把学习的过程会忘了。But please write down any time that you overcome. A mistake that you made in the past and that you fixed now. Write it down. How you did it. It's really, really, really important. And please put it in your, in your weekly notes. Put it in your semester notes at the end of the semester, because you can help a lot of people if there's a good way that you figured out. Suddenly you figured out how to do it and it works. That's why it's not a problem. And I learned that I think in a psychology class. All of us know what bpmfo. We know the alphabet. We know how to read. But most of us don't remember exactly how we learned those things. We know how to tie our shoe. We don't always remember exactly how we learned it, and that's true of many, many things in life. 那个过程往往会忘记。我们只是会有有了那个结果会做某一件事情。But I want you to try and document the process because that that kind of knowledge is just missing in Taiwan. A lot of people don't have it, and it's for me. It's taken over 20 years to collect. A bunch of things that work, but what really works for you as speakers of Mandarin is really valuable, because you're the you're the people who are being affected. So if you figure out how to do it as a Taiwanese, that can help a lot of people. Do you see my point? So write down the process. Is all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Can you say the name Ellen with excitement? Oh, okay. Because you're thinking when you get excited, you're going to open your mouth wider. All right, and you said question. You didn't make a question. Yeah, you didn't add a so say question. Question. Now, yeah. Now you're going a little too to i. So you're gonna have to wait here. It's that you're really close, but you're gonna have to work on it. Question. Question. That's good. That was perfect. That was good. Okay. I'm really excited now. I don't want to shout into the microphone and hurt everybody's ears. Ellen, Ellen. All right, Amy, you've got almost native speaker ears. Does that sound at all like eh? No, it sounds totally like eh, and that's as excited as I'm going to get on camera. Okay, <laughs> did that answer your question? Ellen, Ellen, you can see almost no movement, even when I'm excited. You're saying, well, you're just acting. 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 That's something I just thought of now because I was feeling it when I was shouting. Uh, go this way, not that way. Horizontal, not vertical. Everyone, Ellen. Ellen. You sound great. You sound fine. What was that, Carol? I thought someone called Ellen when I'm into our classroom. You was calling Ellen to come? Mm, no, it's just a joke. Okay, I want to hear the joke <laughs> once more. Oh, it's nothing. It's so just. It's okay, <laughs> calling somebody to come into our classroom. Okay, let's try it again. Ellen. 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 Okay, Bella, try it. Ellen. You still got some ah, right? Amy, when you see Amy's head going, because Amy has about native speaker feel for the sounds. So you've got her right in front of you. You're very lucky. So watch your head. If she's going like that, that means it's too vertical. Ellen. Ellen. Now it's better. Ellen. You can even try smiling, Ellen. Ellen. That's good. Smiling helps. Ellen. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for your question. It was a really good question. Let's continue. So, please. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention. That C cedilla. That's a French symbol. French diacritic. For example, sa. Right? Sa. It's also used in Turkish. This is also borrowed into Turkish, into the Turkish Roman script. So it's a useful symbol, and it's easy to remember if you know a little French. And that's, but it's not sa. This is sa in French, but in IPA it's, it's just like an H with a J U after it, just like hue. Remember the word hue for this symbol, hue. And I will test you on this, so please remember it. This is allophonic in English. It's not a separate phoneme. 
but it's a very useful symbol. So pure, hue. You can use that in narrow transcriptions. Okay? Let's finish the paragraph. Voiceless palatal fricatives. Voiceless. Voiceless. Mm -hmm. Voiceless palatal fricatives occur in German in words such as ich, meaning I, and nicht, nicht. not, nicht, mm -hmm. not. Right. This is useful in German, and the German dictionary that I use, and I'm reading a book on German morphology now, so I get to use this dictionary a lot. The word for I is ich, and this is the transcription that they use, ich. But if it's ach, like ach du liebe, tiena, then we will use a voiceless velar fricative, ach, we use an x. So you can see that in the orthography, they're the same. This is allophonic. It's been made palatal because of the is sound. So we use different symbols, and they actually do use that in the dictionary. So it's useful. So everybody, ich. Ich. Ach. Ach. Uh-huh. And how about baha? Baha. Right. Which symbol? X. X. Right. OK. Good. Let's go on. Say. Uh, as in Cisodilla, as in hue, and then try to pro prolong this sound. Prolong. Prolong. Okay, so. Everybody doing it? You don't need a vowel there. Now? Go ahead. Add voice so that you make a fricative something like the y as in you, but with as the. As in you? As in you, right. but with the front of the tongue, tongue, ne tongue, good tongue near the hard palate, nearer, nearer. That's that's perfect. Good. That's a little hard to pronounce. Nearer, nearer, nearer. 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 We were just talking about this on Ivy yesterday, tongue and tongue, and people were asking on Karen on Ivy. Uh, we had the word rural. And Taiwanese will usually say rural, rural. But we have our coloring uh, in this syllable, and the R is also the initial of the second syllable. So it's not rural, it's rural. 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 Right, and a word that my daughter thought was really hard to say, it's a proper name, proper noun, aurora, aurora, aurora. We were walking on Heping Dong Lu and we saw a Zheng Dan, a Zheng Dan sign. And they're called Aurora in English. And we were, we were discussing Aurora for about half a block. <laughs> okay, um, so here we have. All right, so you, you. And the, what was the word that I was. Um, oh, nearer. It was because of the word nearer. Nearer. Everyone, nearer. 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 Yeah. It's actually kind of hard to say even for a native speaker. And as I've told you, if there are R's and W's, like if there's like an R, a W, and an R in a row, I will almost always make a mistake in English. R and W are really hard to switch back and forth between for me. And nearer, we have to make an extra effort. And so we have the sound. And now we're going to voice it. Everybody? Go ahead. The symbol y is curly tail y is used is used for voice palatal fricative. 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 Okay. Say everybody. All right. So keep track of these new symbols we're learning. We're going to get tested on all of them. I have a bunch of dictations ready. <laughs> with he and ye and the other sounds that we've covered laminal apical uh, retroflex etc make sure you've got them all down go ahead there is a laminal so, uh, symbol what is it It's a little rectangle, a little box under, this, under the letter, under the character. Go to the inside back cover, third column, way to the right, third item down from the top. It says laminal. And the noun for laminal again is? What's the noun for laminal? 
Blade. Yeah, they're two different words. So lam also means blade. Uh, it also means like a flame. Okay, so blade, it's got this little... Okay, so we're on the inside back cover and lamina is a little rectangle under the character. It's sort of like dental, but it's closed. We close the box. So those two are easy to remember, I hope. And you can also see a little symbol for apical right above it. So dental, apical, laminal. And then we also know nasalized. So we're, we're learning more and more of the diacritics and more and more of the IPA symbols themselves. Let's look on the inside back cover and let's find our new symbols that we've learned today. The sh and ye are what place of articulation? Palatal, so look under palatal and what manner? So have you found them? And we've also mentioned the one right next to it, the velar fricative, which is the X, right? Um, let's finish this paragraph. Mm. Making sure that the tip of the tongue is down behind. Is down behind. Is, is down behind the lower front teeth. Mm -hmm. Now change the fricative into a stop by raising stop, the. Stop. Pause. By is a digitse. Into a stop by raising the front of the tongue still more, mm -hmm. while keeping the tip of the tongue down. Uh, the symbols for voiceless and voiced palatal stops are C and upside down F. Um, we learned those last semester a little bit because of the tutorials, but let's put a vowel A after them. The C is Jia. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like Tai Yu, the Chai, Chai Chu, the Chai. Right. That's pretty much a palatal. And sometimes it gets affricated. So you hear sort of a su sound with it. Cha. Cha. And voice it. Ya. Yeah. 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 Not g. Don't make a g sound. It's basically a t sound. Basically make a t sound plus a y. T plus l plus y. Just like tai yu, the tia. Okay? Okay? So, tia. Tia. No k's. No k. Not kia. Tia. Tia, 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 tia. Say T and A. Tia, 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 tia. Okay, don't make any K's. If you hear a K sound, you're doing it wrong. So once more, tia, tia. All right, those are palatal stops, voiceless and voiced. Go on. Say sequences such as. Everyone, a tia, a tia, and a tia, a tia. Yeah. Okay. Making sure that the front of your tongue touches the hard palate, but that the tip of the tongue is down. Okay, is that the case? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the body of your tongue, the front of your tongue is touching your hard palate, but the tip of the tongue is not. So, yeah, yeah. The tip of your tongue is free, right? Not really doing anything. Finish. Then try making similar sequences with the palatal nasal, for which the symbol is... Mm. It's N with the curly Q going left. It goes right on the right-hand side for the, for the um, retroflex, but it's on the left and pointing left for the palatal sound. So you see that upside down F? It's also got a curly Q pointing to the left, so you can remember that that way. Upside down F, curly Q to the left, same for Nya. Go ahead. Mm, reminding one of n and y combined. Very good. Everybody, nya. Yeah. Nya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next time, Sylvie. Last paragraph of 169. Okay, so everybody knows what you have to do. Don't forget your notes. And we'll see you on Monday.